the UNCG basketball family is on this perpetual high, having watched the Spartans get to the NCAA tournament for the second time in the last four years. I am stoked as an alum from 2011, and it's all because of the work of this incredible staff, including one we have today, an assistant, Chris Lepore, who is one of the great guys in college basketball. He joins me now to take us inside his life the last couple of days and the recent achievements that this UCLA basketball team has been able to engineer under head coach Wes Miller and the great players are, that are on this staff. Chris, it was only a couple of days ago we were watching you on national television, your team, Southern Conference Championship. What was it like from your spot on the bench, watching the way your team mounted that furious comeback in the second half to top Mercer and then to see Isaiah Miller direct the team to victory down the stretch and then watching all of his players huddle around him on the floor afterwards, swarming him in celebration. Yeah, th thanks for having me on, by the way, Brian. This, this means a lot to have a, a UNCG alum uh, celebrating with us across the country. <laughs> uh, you know, we've, we've, we've felt your support throughout the season. So I uh, wanted to start by saying thanks, man. But uh, in, in terms of, of celebrating this moment, man, it's, it's so special for us. And for me personally, I've been with coach Miller now for seven years. And so when that horn sounded, I just had this overwhelming feeling thinking about the guys who paved the way to make this possible. You know, there was a group and, and it's funny because I've been around, I'm like the, you know, I've been with coach for the longest now. And I'll tell some of the guys in our program now about how my first year here, we, we lost 22 games. And how my second year, we were fired up about getting an invite to the CBI because we, we, we were 15 and 16 that year. And we were fired up about that. We felt like we were turning the corner and they were like, what? That's crazy. You know, they're used to winning 27, 28, 29 games. I just, you know, by, they think it's just magic. It just happened. But there was, there was a group of guys, Deontay Baldwin, Nick Paulus, K.L. Locke, R.J. White. And I thought about those guys as soon as the horn sounded because they never got the chance to cut down nets and they never got the chance to play in the NCAA tournament. But those are four-year guys that paved the way and made this possible. Without those guys, we're not sitting here. Uh, with, with with this trophy and coach Miller jokes that you know he he thought we were getting fired at that point in, in, uh, here and those guys a, a lot of other guys left the program because we were struggling and, and those guys stuck with us and and they made this possible and uh, so I, I thought about those guys right away in that moment let's go back to that turning point so years in in the past you're struggling why was it the right idea looking back, obviously, but at the time to stay with the course of action, to stay with the plan and, and not deviate from that because you knew that eventually, even though you hadn't seen it necessarily right away, that the results were going to come in the future? Yeah, it's, it's funny because we knew we had a talented group and they were all young at that point. And we knew if, if these guys stick together, we've got a chance. And the group who ended up cutting down nets first, the group that took us to the NCAA tournament, the group that was Francis Alonzo, Jordy Kuyper, Marvin Smith. And then, you know, you added some younger guys into that group, James Dickey, Kyron Galloway, but Jordy, Marvin, Francis, Garrett Collins, that group, after their freshman year, that was the year we won 15 games, went to the CBI, we were fired up. Um, they got together and I remember they sent the coaching staff a text and they said, guys, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to cut down nets here at UNCG. And I'll never forget Marvin Smith on that text chain. And it was this long text about how the work they were going to put in and what it was going to take and how they're not going anywhere. They're not bailing on us. And coach Miller and I are reading this text together on the bus and just like, we, we've never had this before in our program. This is, this is so special. And as seniors, that group, Francis, Jordy, and Marvin, cut down nets and, and took this program to the NCAA tournament. And so we, we, we literally call those guys the culture changers. Wow. And, and it started with that group with Deontay Baldwin, Jordy, and uh, Deontay Baldwin, K.L. Locke, R.J. White, Nick Paulus, the group that didn't get to cut down nets that stuck with us. And then that next group that came in, Francis, Jordy, Marvin, 
Garrett who got us over the hump. And, you know, since then, I mean, the rest is history. You, you look 25 wins, win the regular season, go to the NIT, 27 wins, go to the NCAA tournament, cut down nets, 29 wins the next year. Last year, even in a, how COVID ended the year, we still had 23 wins. This year, we're going to the dance. I mean, the, the success since that point is, is, is crazy, but that was truly the inflection point uh, and the turning point of this program. That, that group sticking with us through, through it all. Yeah, through, through it all, no doubt. Chris Lepore joining us, UNCG assistant basketball coach. I'm Brian Fenley, an anchor at FSR and a UNCG alum. Never want you to compare what this NCAA tournament birth is to the one that happened a couple years ago, because in, in itself, that one a couple years ago had, had so much majesty, had so much pageantry, meant so much given that it had been your first as a staff together at, at Greensboro. To, sure. to, to, to this one, but what makes this latest one sweeter in its own way, e even based upon the, the hurdles that this season presented itself that you maybe didn't have obviously had to deal with in seasons prior? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because obviously it's, it, it's hard to compare. And the last time we won it, like you said, it was the first time in 17 years and, uh, you know, it put, it put our program on the national stage. And this one though, man, with all the challenges of COVID and everything these guys have sacrificed, I mean, they literally sacrificed being regular college students to make it through the season, you know? Um, and uh, what's funny about it is there have been points in practice all throughout the season that at the, we always huddle at the at center court at the end of practice. And there have been times throughout the year where we turn around and look at the wall where all the banners hang on the wall. And, and coach Miller would say, guys, it's hard to do. <laughs> you gotta be the last one standing to put those up on the wall. And it's going to take a little more in here. If you guys want to put one on the wall. And he looked Isaiah Miller in the eyes and said, listen, you were, you were a freshman. You were a role player on that team the last time you did it. You haven't put one on there as the leader of this group yet. And, and that was a challenge to Isaiah from day one. You know, can you lead this team to put another one on that wall and challenge this whole group? Because Isaiah and Caleb, Caleb was a redshirt freshman on that NCAA tournament team. So Isaiah and Caleb were the only ones around and said, look, nobody else in this huddle has, has put one of these up on this wall. How much are you guys willing to give? And I'll tell you what, man, th th this group really responded to that. And we would do a little something called banner drills at the end of practice, uh, you know, a couple times a week where it was just like hustling effort plays and taking a charge and diving on a loose ball. And they just bought into the concept of whatever it takes. We want to be etched in history. We want to put something on that wall. We want to hang a banner. I could see that being taken to heart in the Southern Conference Championship game just a couple of days ago when, you know, the game was back and forth. It was super, super close. And then late in the second half, Isaiah Miller just says, all right, it's time for me to take over here. It's time for me to take control of this game. What is it about his abilities, his moxie, his acumen as a basketball player, that he has this gear, this level that he can get to, where he's basically unstoppable. Yeah, it's he's he's a special talent, man. It's it's amazing. I, you know, on, on his senior night, I I posted a picture of him and uh, playing AAU basketball. It seems like yesterday we were watching him play AAU, trying to plan his official visit and get him committed here as soon as possible. Um, you know, he he was hardly recruited at all coming out of high school. Uh, everybody thought he was not, not a point guard and too small to play off the ball. Couldn't, you know, didn't have a great handle at the time, couldn't shoot the ball. So Coach Miller just looked at him and said, listen, I don't care what position he is. That dude's a winner. <laughs> yeah. That dude's a Spartan. And, uh, and so we took a chance, and he was actually a non-qualifier coming in the door. And he, he made a 4.0 in summer school. And the NCAA cleared him uh, just as we were returning from our 
uh, trip to Spain as a team. We took our foreign tour to Spain and he couldn't come on the trip because he wasn't cleared yet. And he's still mad about that, by the way. He says, y'all owe me a uh, but uh, so he couldn't come on that trip, but that was the year we cut down nets and went to the NCAA tournament his freshman year. And he added some punch to our team with, without a doubt. But, but that, that gear that you're talking about, um, it's, it's funny because a lot of people want to talk about how he had 25 and, you know, 32 the night before that and 30 the night before that. And his gear is on the defensive end. And over the course of his career, if you watch the second half closely, there's going to come a time in the game where in the second half, we've been pressing, we're trying to wear people out, and the inevitable Isaiah Miller steal happens. Mm -hmm. And it's because people have to deal with him for 30, 40 minutes. And it always happens in the second half. And you saw it happen in the Mercer game too. He gets the steal and there's the patented Isaiah Miller dunk. And so that, that gear that you're talking about, it starts on the defensive end. And really, even before that, it starts in the huddle. We had a, we had a point in the game that you're talking about where we're down and both teams are tired and he starts pointing to his chest. Wow. And I think about those, those moments in practice where we're pointing to the banners on the wall. And he's like, how much are we willing to give, man? How much are we willing to give? He's, he's, he's just a winner. I also couldn't help in watching the championship game. The camera kept panning over to his mom and how, how happy she was celebrating and watching this all unfold. What's it been like to see her relationship with him blossom and then how you've gotten to know her and certainly the effect that she has had on him? Oh, man, I, I, I can't talk enough about Marilyn Miller. She is such a such a special woman. Um, we talk almost every day. Like, <laughs> like, uh, she's like a, a family member. Honestly. Yeah. When, I, when I'm thinking about who I need to call, like it's like my mom, my wife, and then it's like Marilyn Miller. <laughs> just, just to check in every day. Um, every day I wake up and my phone has uh, a GIF from Marilyn. And it'll say, <laughs> I have one right now. It says, happy Wednesday. And it's like a bunch of minions jumping around. And, you know, on game day, it'll be, you know, a meme of Russell Westbrook clapping, saying, game day, let's go. And, I mean, she is so invested in what we're doing here and so invested in Isaiah's life. Um, she is a special, special person. And um, we're, we're blessed to, uh, you know, have her as a part of the UNCG family. But the way that she cares for Isaiah is, is, is really, really special, really I special. I can feel that, that energy, that no, positive no. energy energy that she exudes. The locker room after knowing that you'd won the Southern Conference Championship. First of all, I'm in awe of, of the hardware right there next to you. And I, I'm so glad and I'm so grateful that is to have that part of this interview and that folks can see that. But for those of us who are not allowed in that locker room, now we've seen the GIF or whatever you, GIF or whatever you call it, the famous one of Wes Miller. Where what is he? He's like dancing in and kind of going like this with his <laughs> tie in his hand and his jacket open or whatever. But yeah. I don't think that was maybe it was a repeat performance of that GIF. What was it like? Yeah, that uh, the fame the famous GIF is from uh, the win at NC State. That's it. Yeah, that was that was the year actually we went to the NCAA tournament. And we won we won at NC State after losing a couple tough ones in a row, um, and, and that one that one was extra special. But uh, the scene in the locker room after this game, Coach Miller knew what was going to happen. <laughs> they had the, the, the Gatorade cooler ready, right? So the whole coaching staff, before we go in there, we're grabbing as many water bottles as we can so that we have some ammo when we walk in. <laughs> so coach has like six water bottles ready, kicks the door down, and there's just water going everywhere. I mean, it's like a super soaker commercial in there. Uh, and and it, it was complete madness for about – about a minute and a half and then you know we all settled down and, and just had a moment as a family to say guys this is an amazing feeling let's go cut these nets down and we're not done yet yep. and you know I, I think since that 2018 NCAA tournament birth our program believed that we could get there but because of the way we played Gonzaga down mm -hmm. to the wire 
we also believe, guys, we, we could do more than just get there. Like that's, that's not the goal anymore. We check that one off. Like let's go in there and try to, and try to make some noise. And, uh, and, and that's, that's where our team's head is at. And that's the next challenge for us. Yeah. And that's sort of what Isaiah Miller said after the game against Mercer, where he said, Hey, just because we've made it, our work is not done. He's like, I want to leave an impact here as a senior where look, we are going to fight and, and try to make something out of a, out of a run. And, and it, at, at the least show people that not only do we deserve to be in the, in the NCAA tournament, but that we can hang with anybody. And what's been shown by your program, it doesn't matter who it is you're playing, you have that ability to do so. And I know it's a, we have some time until you figure out who you're playing and, and all that, but I'll leave you with this final question. What are these next couple of days looking like for you as far as a team and, and how you organize practices when you don't know who you're playing yet and you obviously f- are feeling good about yourself, but then there's that thought of let's refocus let's not get too high and mighty because there's still a lot of work to do. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Well, uh, today's an off day. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, they, 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 they need some rest, uh, but we'll, we'll get back in the gym tomorrow. Um, and uh, the next couple of days are just going to be about us. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're going to work on us. We're going to work on get back in shape, get some wind. Uh, but it's going to be the nuts and bolts of, of, of who we are as a basketball team over the next couple of days. Um, we're going to work on our defensive principles, and it's going to be the same things we've been talking about all year long. That's, that's the way coach does things here is we're not going to pull out any tricks. Uh, we're just going to talk about UNCG basketball and, 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 and try to get better over the next couple of days until we get to Indianapolis and, and, and quarantine. So we're going to work on our defensive principles. We're going to work on ball screen D. We're going to work on sprinting back and talking. We're going to work on box outs. I mean, it, it, it sounds like the most simple <laughs> game plan of all time, but keeping it simple is what's got us here. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel and uh, we're going to get right back to work. Control the, control the uncontrollables and, or, or control what you can't control. Let me, let me get that right. And then also the fact that everything that you've done, why change it when it's worked so well? This, yeah, and, you know, we'll probably shoot a couple free throws maybe. <laughs> yes. After missing 13 in the conference championship game and making everybody up there chew their nails off in, in, in the crowd. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll make a point to add that into the, into the practice plan this week. But other than that, same as usual, you guys have done this, this strategy and it's worked so well. So why, why alter that? In any yeah. Way? And, and, and part of our thing is practice should be harder than the game. And so when, when, when we practice, we practice hard. Like we, we compete and we go up and down every day, unless it's like, you know, shoot around the day of the game. Um, we're we're going to get after it. There's going to be at least a segment where we're going up and down five on five against each other. And our, our whole thing is, you know, we got to play, we got to play. And, and especially in a year like this, where we didn't have an off season and a, and a preseason um, playing is so important. And we've stuck with that throughout, throughout the whole season in every practice plan. And uh, we're going to get after a little bit this week too. The Spartan players are going to get after it. Chris Lepore joining me now is going to get after it no question about it I am so proud as an alum of UNCG to watch the spirit of this team and the winning culture that you and Wes Miller and the rest of the staff have put together and I'm really excited to watch what you guys are going to do coming up here nevertheless whatever what what you've already accomplished it is so profound and it makes me so proud, man. And look at that ring. Look at that ring. That is one big ring. And another one coming. Another one coming. You've got the hardware right there. The G is backing you. And I am so grateful for a few minutes of your time. As a proud alum, I'm Brian Fenley. Chris Laporte, you're the best. What a great guy. And no wonder the, the players give it their all because of guys like you that are on the staff thanks man i I know i owe you a west miller bobblehead it'll be in the mail (laughs) shortly don't worry about Uh, it you got more important things to do right now thanks for having me on man this was great